What's going on, everybody? Welcome to The Hustle here on Wager Talk TV. A beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Hopefully it's beautiful wherever you are. I am Brian Power, joined by my good friend Adam Trigger, and we are here to get you ready for what will be 50 consecutive days of football starting tomorrow in, of all places, the wide world of Conference USA. Trig, I can think of no better person than yourself to talk about this hodgepodge of midweek college football. <laughs> what do you got to say, man? Well, first of all, Brian, I'm I'm thrilled to be on the show with you. I think this is our first little short together. You showed up wearing like Mike Schmidt's warm up jacket. Uh, I think that's a <laughs> Phillies warm up there, which is it incredible. Is. I was miserable, absolutely miserable after going to bed last night watching the Giants vomit on themselves for four quarters. I know you, you were on the wrong side of that one as well. Uh, but we're here talking college football. The baseball playoffs are starting today, so I, I feel great. We got college. Did you see I'm putting college basketball videos up, Brian? It's I only did. Like yes. A month away, so you know it's it's a good time to be alive, I suppose. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what? You know what? Mike Schmidt and I have in common besides uh, this uh, zip up, by the way. I, I can't you. wait to find out. Yeah. Both went to Ohio University, buddy. That's awesome. Probably, I, uh, <laughs> we're probably the two most famous graduates in the history of Ohio University. Us and Ed O'Neill, who was Al Bundy on Married with Children. Easily. I would say that's yeah. an easy call. Yeah. Um, oh, but mentioned. yeah. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I was going to say, yeah, they'll let us, they'll let us, I mean, we could sit here and, and BS all day with, with the best of them. So I, I should get into Wednesday night football, Brian. First of all, you already said it. Mm -hmm. First, you know, first day of 60 straight or 50 straight days of, of football um, throughout the month of October. And we now have the midweek Wednesday games. Soon we're going to have Mac games, but this is going to be Conference USA on a Wednesday night. Jacksonville State, Middle Tennessee State. I have to say, I you know, as bad of a college uh, football week I had last week, I I did like avoid some, um, like I avoided a couple disasters. One being a potential bet on Sam Houston State because it was on my list, Brian. I I really wanted seven. And when I couldn't get a widely available seven, I decided to leave it off. And boy, am I glad I did because, of course, I'm referencing the Sam Houston State Jacksonville State game that Sam Houston State led throughout, probably deserved to win and, and lost in overtime by a touchdown. Which means if you had Jacksonville State uh, go buy a lottery ticket, you managed to cover <laughs> the six and a half point spread that that was the you know the number most of the week. Um, I go back to that game and it's just so I'm really going to go all the way back to the beginning of the season. Um, I took a loss fading Jacksonville state with UTEP and a 5% play in a game that I felt like UTEP, you know, kind of was the better team. Certainly the yardage would say so UTEP did what they've done all year and carelessly turned it over, ended up losing by three. Um, so much so that, you know, I, I wanted to go against Jacksonville state so badly that I came back with Eastern Michigan a couple weeks ago. Uh, and they just no-showed in that game on the road, lost 21-0, uh, which further overvalued Jacksonville State. And kind of last week, that's that's where my head was at. I felt like they were overvalued going on the road. Um, I still think they were, but they ended up getting the money. And I think that's where we get to this week, and we're starting to see that play out in the line, in the betting market, in this game. People are loving themselves Some Rich Rodriguez here. Jacksonville State's four and one. They're alive and well, but they've got to go on the road now two weeks in a row. Back-to-back uh, -back road spot is not going to be easy. And I feel like, you know, Middle Tennessee State, they're just kind of getting discarded at this point for being one and four. But how were they really supposed to be much better than one and four at this point is my question. I don't think so. They had to play Alabama. They were never going to win that game. They actually played a really tough game against Missouri. One, they were kind of right in the mix as a huge underdog. Uh, and, and then, listen, Colorado State, that's a tough team. Uh, they they had their chances in that game. I would say that they got outplayed the last couple weeks. But again, Colorado State's a team I've been high on. And then, of course, Middle Tennessee State was outplayed by Western Kentucky, who very well be the, might be the best team in this conference, at least if they're not the best, they're up there with the best. They're one of them. And it's a, it's a game that came up on our Hustle Thursday show. Uh, where I said, okay, Middle Tennessee State got the, the sharp buy early in the week, but money started to come back day of Western Kentucky, and they ended up winning relatively easily. So for two straight weeks in a row, the sharp market has hit Middle Tennessee State, uh, moved it up against Colorado State, moved it down against Western Kentucky, went 0-2 there, 
But surprisingly, the number is not moving in Middle Tennessee State's favor here. Why is that? It's probably because the betting public just jumped in both feet first with Jackson uh, with Jacksonville State. Because as I said, they're an appealing team. People think Rich Rodriguez kind of has, has it working here. And he very well may. I think they had a season win total of like five and a half. I think our boy Bayou Betts might cash that at some point. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah. but you know, I just, I think that's a little bit of an overreaction, Brian. I think that that being bet down uh, was incorrect. I would make this more where it opened around five, five and a half. So I might have to jump in here. I haven't added it as a client play yet, but I'm certainly giving it some thought. I think this might be the spot where Middle Tennessee State has like the internal come to Jesus moment. They have a lot of veterans, a lot of, of upperclassmen on that. Uh, yeah, they have a lot of upperclassmen on that team. They just went out and lost to Western Kentucky. And I think this might be the spot where they say, hey, we're 0-1 in Conference USA. We were never beating Alabama. We probably were never beating Missouri. We lost a tough non-conference game to Colorado State. But we can still win this conference. It's there for the taking. I think they they sort of rally the troops and get right at home here. And they likely do so. And co- they likely cover the spread in the process. So I just think it's a perfect spot to buy low on Middle Tennessee State and maybe sell Jacksonville State a little bit. And for that reason, I like the Red Raiders on, on Wednesday night football at Conference USA. Yeah, a couple things. I believe you talked about this being back-to-back road games for Jacksonville State. I believe it's the first time they've had to do that. Of course, this is a new FBS team, the two new FBS teams in college football this year, both in Conference USA. They played last week. You referenced the wild one between Jacksonville State and Sam Houston State. Jacksonville State was down big in that game. Uh, I joked with our producer, Robert, actually, who's from Charm City during that game that Sam Houston State doubled its season point total in like one quarter, and then they didn't score again until overtime. It was it was a brutal loss <laughs> for them. Just to, just to run through some of the other Conference USA games, because I've got one that I like on Thursday, but uh, it's not a late-night degenerate special trig, but boy, I, it's for the gamblers, because I can't, God bless the fine people of Las Cruces. I can't imagine who else is watching FIU and New Mexico <laughs> State. And then we also have, you talk about Western Kentucky being one of the favorites in this league. I think the other favorite is Liberty. Jamie Chadwell jumping from Coastal Carolina to Liberty. They're unbeaten, and it is a horrible spot mm-hmm. for Sam Houston State. You and I, one thing we have in common is we like to take ugly underdogs. I don't think I could do it with Sam Houston State off that gutting loss a short week going Friday to Wednesday, and they're playing a Liberty team. Liberty, 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 as the commercial goes. Uh, that <laughs> is, of course, off a bye. And uh, like I said, undefeated. So Liberty might roll there. And that would bring me to my game, Trig. Uh, unless if you have anything to say on those two games in between, uh, I'm going to go into Western Kentucky, Louisiana Tech. Well, uh, I guess I'll just say that I, as far as Sam Houston Liberty, it looks like Sam Houston took a little money at the Open which is expected on a big number like that. But I'm kind of with you. I don't know if I, I don't know if I would, because remember Sam Houston's in a similar spot, right? Like now having to go on the road, as you, as you reference, like in this conference, they're also new to this conference. So it's like, yeah, I, I mean, they very well could cover a big number, but I don't think they have much of a chance to win. So I don't really have much interest getting involved there. Florida International. See, here's the thing with Florida International. This, I, I haven't bet this yet. I won't bet this right now. But for whatever reason, I mean, this, they've a couple of times, they've taken so much opposing money. Like week one of the season, um, I, I bet Florida International against Louisiana Tech. They got me a pretty easy cover. That game wasn't even on my radar, Brian, until it got pushed so far in the other direction that I said, it's 12. I mean, it opened like seven or eight. It got to 12. I felt like it was just way too many points and I had to jump in. And it's you know it's open four it's now six we're not even to game day um the, i have a feeling that people just come in rolling in on wednesday morning saying hey there's some football let's bet some football tonight are all going to be looking to bet new mexico state there and and that's not a team i've been overly impressed with this year let's just no. put it that way um probably so, the yeah. worst bowl team in the history of college football last year which speaks volumes <laughs> given how many bowls there are now but i mean the teams they beat to get the six wins it was comical i feel like they had like valparaiso on their schedule or something like yeah, they, something yeah, ridiculous they, they threw like them that. on yeah. late they threw them on late <laughs> to get the six wins yeah it was crazy um all right western kentucky louisiana tech here is the a fourth and final conference usa game we have to talk about i got something to say on this Key thing to watch here, guys, is whether or not quarterback Hank Bachmeyer, the transfer from Boise State, returns to the field for Louisiana Tech. 
He has not played since the Bulldogs lost 40-37 to to North Texas on September 16th. Uh, the last two games have seen Louisiana Tech lose at Nebraska. That was to be expected. Then they win at UTEP, uh, who I believe is everyone's favorite Conference USA punching bag as of right now. Everyone wants a coach fired there. Uh, Louisiana Tech 2-0 and against the spread in those two games. So they've covered both times without the starting quarterback. With or without him, I'm expecting an inspired effort on Thursday from the Bulldogs at home. First time playing in Ruston in nearly three weeks. We've already seen the line move a little bit in the Bulldogs' direction per the wagertalk.com live odds screen. Number open, LA Tech plus seven. They're now down to plus five and a half. Trig, I'll ask you in a minute if you think that's sharp action doing that. But I know Western Kentucky looked good last week against Middle Tennessee. But the previous two games, they got clobbered at Ohio State, which we all expected. And then they lose 27-24 to Troy, a game that should not have been that close by any stretch. Troy outgained WKU 521-288. to So when you see total yardage discrepancy like that, it should not be a three-point game. Oh, by the way, Troy 4%, uh, 4% winner for me last Saturday at Georgia State. They uh, had no problem taking that one. Obviously, Louisiana Tech, they're not as good as Ohio State. I don't, I don't think you need to tune in here to Wager Talk TV to find that out. Uh, they're not as good as Troy either, probably. But at the very worst, Trig, I think they could keep this close, especially if Bachmeyer's back. And here's a little trend for you. These teams don't play every year. They actually haven't met since 2018. But if you're into trends, historical trends, the underdog has won outright four of the last five meetings between these schools. This just feels like a game where I want to take the points. The faithful should be fired up in Ruston Thursday night. Give me Louisiana Tech. Is that sharp money? that you are seeing pouring in on the home team in this one. So Brian, I haven't seen it, it like I haven't seen sharp money in this game yet, but I I would I would guess that that people who hit that on the open, it, it's probably some respected money there because you know, for for a couple of reasons. One, we'll go back to last week. I already I I know that Middle Tennessee State did take some, you know, respected money against Western Kentucky and oftentimes how they will bet is, you know, like sharp betters tend to go back to the well if they miss like until not you know maybe not like but like if if they missed last week and they said okay we we want we, we'll take the same position again against western kentucky maybe we see value with louisiana tech for me personally i, I agree with you uh, on louisiana tech and liking the underdog in this spot because that's sort of like at home like that's where louisiana tech has thrived so i'll just go back to last week quick i had utep friday night i thought it was a great spot for utep um because I I equally wanted to fade Louisiana Tech in that in that sort of roll road like role they were in. Remember, they played Nebraska really tough. Like they gave a heck of a, a an effort against Nebraska two weeks ago, and they. So if you look at how the schedule lines up, part of the reason I liked UTEP last week was Nebraska on the road at UTEP where they've been poor to this game at home. Now UTEP was just abysmal last week. I took a loss yeah. there. Um, but so now I almost think that puts Louisiana Tech in an even better position because they they sort of got away with, I mean, they played okay. I don't think that they were, I think UTEP more or less played poorly and kind of gave them that game. I would agree. And so one has to think like they've been, ve- they've probably been very focused on this game. I would agree with you. This is a, a game I think they probably had circled. And so you should see an effort here. And I, I'm, 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 in line with you here, I think an effort from Louisiana Tech, win or not, keeps it close. I, I really do. Uh, if Conference USA is not your style, there are, of course, two Power 5 games on Friday to look forward to. K- Kansas State is playing Oklahoma State, right? on a that shout-out to Kelly Stewart. And then we've got uh, a game uh, between, what was the other game? Oh, Illinois, who, by the way, is awful. Illinois, if you've not downgraded yep. Illinois in your power ratings, you need to do that right now. Illinois is playing who? I just remember it was Illinois now. I can't even remember. They're, they're the playing the, they're right playing up. Nebraska and That's right. they're playing Nebraska and yeah. I they're really bad. I'm actually kicking myself that I haven't made more money fading them this year. I came out week 1 had a nice bet on Toledo that cash basically talked about how how poor I thought this Illinois team was and and then haven't really gone back to the well with it. Just haven't found the right spot, but they are you know, outside of a couple of, of defensive players that are probably going to go pretty high in the draft, um, there's not much on this Illinois team. I would agree with you. Okay. That's college football. NFL, I know you and our good buddy Mark Zinno always talk Survivor here on Tuesday. We don't want to leave that out. I know the 
at the top, obviously, you talked about the New York Giants, just shameful performance on Monday Night Football. <laughs> and that kind of Brian, leads they had, you to they something. had two weeks. Yeah, they had two yeah, weeks I, to I, prepare I, for that game. A mini buy, a mini buy. What good did that do? <laughs> um, but yeah, so that leads you to kind of a, the survivor discussion. They're ob- they're at Miami, the Giants next week. Miami's a team that probably most people have not used in Survivor as of yet. You think that's probably the best option for Week Five in the NFL? So it's a option. It could be the best option. They're home. It's a non divisional game. They come off a loss, so you have to like you, you have to think that they're going to be pretty hungry there, coming off a loss, like to you know getting kind of embarrassed uh, up here in Buffalo. Um. Here's my thing with Survivor. I, talk, I, I started this conversation yesterday with Mark, and I think it's like so important. You, you don't need to save specific teams for the holidays, right? Like for the holiday, and I'm talking about the holidays, meaning Circus Survivor, that's kind of where we you know, start this discussion. The, the Dolphins are a Thanksgiving team. They play on that Black Friday, which means that they're part of the Thanksgiving week. So I think a lot of people are, are going to look and say, okay, well, I have to save this team. Or maybe, but here's the thing. There's other teams playing on those holidays. And I think you, you right now, none of us know what the best option is, right? Quarterbacks can get mm-hmm. hurt. Tua could be in a body cast by that point, for all we know, with, with his, <laughs> uh, you know, with his sort of history. So I would not pass up a team. Make sure you have a viable option for Thanksgiving, meaning like you don't want to get go into the Thanksgiving week and have to take a six-point dog because you've burned through every single favorite. Well, I wouldn't waste a team just because they play on one of the holiday weeks because we're still trying to survive. We're still trying to advance. The Dolphins look like a pretty good option, Brian. I mean, they're an 11-point home favorite. It's a non-divisional game. The Dolphins are coming off a loss. Yesterday, I was thinking the Lions might be the best option. Yeah. After seeing the Giants and the way they played on Monday Night Football, and now the fact that they're going to have to go down there on a short week against a Dolphins team that comes off of a loss themselves, I don't know. I think the Dolphins might be might be the best option. Just picking a team to simply win this week, uh, it'll be interesting. I haven't obviously we don't have to lock any of this in, but I, I, the, the Dolphins. Let's put it this way: they're suddenly more appealing after that debacle last night. It, the key will be this: you're going to have to keep a look and see. Like the Giants could get a little bit healthier this week, and then if that's the case, they might have some appeal against a huge number. So. You know, that that's something that needs to be weighed in as well. But like, I guess my overall point here is don't just say, oh, I can't use them because I have to use them on Thanksgiving. The same, the same way you wouldn't say that with the Lions, who are in a good spot this week as well, at home against the Panthers. I prefer to play against the Panthers with Bryce Young at quarterback. If Dalton was the quarterback, I wouldn't. But with Bryce Young at the quarterback, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with, you know, going against the Panthers. And I'll be also keeping an eye on their defense because if their defense is banged up, They've had to deal with some defensive injuries the last couple of weeks. That game could get that much more appealing. But Brian, it's hard. It's going to be hard to get me off of either the Lions or Dolphins here. I'm sure a lot of people see it the same way. Um, I can tell you though, I'll be far, far away from the Commanders. You won't see me trying to get through Survivor <laughs> with Thursday night Commanders Bears. I could see the Bears kind of, you know, playing well in that game. I'll throw it over to you. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, the, the only two teams on Sunday with where, that are favored by more than six points are the Lions and Dolphins. You laid out, look, I had a very big play on Buffalo against Miami, not to pat myself on the back, but I will for a second. Um, and watching the game, it was really scary. The thing was, as much as Buffalo's offense was humming, like you just felt that Miami could get it going at any minute. And again, I, I don't think that people need much you know, watching this need much convincing that it's going to be very hard for the Giants to trade points with the Dolphins. If the Dolphins offense even like closely resembles what we've seen the first few weeks, the Giants have no chance of winning that football game. None. This is a team that outside the second half against Arizona has scored like 19 points this year. I mean, Miami could score 19 and a quarter. So I, I, and it's, you talked about saving something for Thanksgiving. Obviously Detroit plays on Thanksgiving every year. So you're good. Dallas. One of those two teams. Yeah. Dallas. um, You know, if you haven't burned them uh, yet, I know, you know, some Dallas taught you, you don't take road teams in survivor. It's not a good idea. A couple of weeks ago when they go to Arizona. (laughs) Chances are, chances are if you use the Cowboys already, you're probably not in it anymore. Right. Cause that was the place to use the Cowboys would have been against the Cardinals. So. 
Absolutely. But yeah, I'm with you. I think the Dolphins are, are the best option here uh, for week five. Survivor, uh, Trig, do you have anything else you would like to share with the fine people other than that? Uh, I, I'm ready to bring it home, man. Um, if you're interested in college basketball, I'm posting uh, preview videos all, all, all month long. I'm going to do 30 in 30 days. You might be wondering, why is Canisius College? I'll, also, Brian, now I believe it's Canisius <laughs> Uni. I think they changed it to Canisius University, like as of this year. I don't know what you'll have to you'll have to ask Brian Power what's the difference between a college and a university. I have no idea, but I'm basically previewing all the teams I went out and saw in person last year. That's why, and I'm going to do it in the order that I saw them. So at some point, I'll probably bring Pro- Brian Power in to maybe do a co-preview of like Kent State with me. Akron, some of the places we went together. Um, I'm just trying to give you, listen, there's 